Hi guys, James here. Today I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to install these floating shelves. I've got two of them that I'm going to be using to put up on the back of my daughter's wall here. I'm going to have one on one side and the other one staggered on the other side there. So I'll show you how to try and locate the stud and then if you don't have a stud, how to actually put like a wall toggle in to pick up some of the weight as well. Alright, let's get started. Inside the shelves, you get this little bracket which gets screwed to the wall and then it comes with your fixing screws and toggles they are in here as well. Assistant's going to... Hello everybody! My assistant's here to help. <laughs> Next step is to mark out the height of where you want them. You can hold them up to get a bit of a rough idea. So if you pick up a stud, that's ideal. A stud's the timber member that's in behind the back of the plasterboard. Generally, in Australia, they're spaced here between 600 millimeters or 450 millimeters. So once you find one, the location of it, you can then usually measure across if, if you know what the spacings are and pick it up. I like to use the tapping method as well. I found one there, you can really hear the dent sound or, or not so hollow when you're on top of the actual stud itself. Now I'm pretty lucky here because I built this place, so I'm going to do a bit of a flashback. We can look at this wall, I can look at some of the photos and actually see where the studs are. But, you know, I can already feel where they are anyway, so I'm not going to go into that detail and go back and look at photos. But if you're building and renovating, it's always a good tip to take plenty of photos so you can see where all the timbers are in behind the wall or any services if you need to go back and reference it. But anyway, I found my stud. So I'm going to use that as a first starting point and then I'll work across for the other shelves and go from there. For the holes where you can't pick up a stud, you use these wall toggles. That's why we pre-drilled through the plasterboard first, just so that this bit can get through without mashing up the plasterboard too much. Then you screw that in. So what's next, assistant? Um... So, screw that onto the wall? Yeah. Okay. The assistant says the next step is to screw the bracket on the wall. So let's try that. Now those toggles were a little bit hard to put into this gyp rock or this plasterboard only because this is sound check and it's a really dense board. Normally in general plasterboard, that stuff goes through, those toggles go in pretty easy, but you see that it actually sort of burned up a little bit trying to get them in. But, like I said, most, most sheets should be okay with it. How do we get that out? That's where I picked up the stud. So that one's nice and solid. So it's always good, like I said, if you can get a timber rather than just relying on those wall toggles. But if you can't find timbers, the wall toggles will do the trick. You just gotta be careful putting your screws in. So next step now is just to slide this over. You'll see on the bottom here, there's two little uh, holes. There's a hole under these brackets here. So when we slide this on... Yeah! <laughs> it looks perfect! Does it? Yeah! Oh, thank you. I get the thumbs up. Um, then we just put these two little screws that it comes with in underneath to help secure it into position. Because my studs on this one, I don't need to pre-drill those, I can just drill straight through. <laughs> Hang on, we haven't recorded yet. Are you ready? <clears throat> so here we are. Shelves all done. What do you think, Alana? Are you happy? No. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go guys, that's how you put up floating shelves. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Like or subscribe. Catch you next time. Cheers. Ooh.